Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at arithmetic in JavaScript and Node.js. Um, if, you, uh, if you've done some programming before, there are probably no surprises here, except that uh, Java, C, C++ and some others have this concept of integer division, whereby dividing an integer by an integer always produces an integer or whole number. And there isn't such a thing in JavaScript, so division works as you might expect if you've never heard of that. But anyway, um, putting that aside, so um, addition works like you'd expect in JavaScript. Let's do console.log uh, 5 plus 4. Just zoom in a bit, maybe. Well, let's run this. So node arithmetic. Oh yeah, I called this 01080. Let's run this. Um, 9, is that right? Yeah. Uh, subtraction is um, it's exactly like you'd expect as well. Five. Um, we've got multiplication. So let's say three times four. So we use the asterisk symbol in JavaScript for multiplication, as we do in many other languages. And there's also division. Let's do maybe seven divide by two. So this is all pretty much the same as other programming languages. Let's just run it. Seven divided by two is 3.5. Three times four is 12. We've got a mod operator as well. Um, so the mod operator uh, basically gives you the remainder from a division. So if I change this to mod, it's a percent sign. Let's just make a comment, mod operator. Uh, so 7 mod 2, well, if you divide 7 by 2, um, but then work out the remainder, so that's obviously 1. Let's run it. 1. And the mod operator actually in JavaScript will will also work with, uh, at least with no Node.js, it will also work with um, values that aren't integers, that aren't whole numbers. So if I write like, I don't know, 12.3 divided by 3, let's say divided by 5, that gives us uh, 2.3. So sometimes it can, it can be a bit confusing um, because like um, numbers that are like floating point numbers uh, can't be stored in a completely exact way. Uh, not only due to the nature of computing, but due to the nature of reality. You can't, if you've got a, like a number with an infinite number of uh, decimal values after the decimal point, an infinite number of significant digits, you can't store it exactly. And so sometimes, like if you're expecting 2.3, you might get 2.299999 and so on. And you might wonder what's happened, but it's just kind of uh, just the problem of being able to represent floating point numbers exactly it just can't be done but here you can see that if you divide 12 by 12.3 by 5 you can fit two fives into that and you've got 2.3 left over which is what the mod operator is giving us here usually um, you use the mod operator with integers in programming and it can occasionally be very useful there's also um, it's probably worth mentioning there's also uh, a couple of what we call unary operators that apply to apply to variables here. Um, they're intended for use with integer variables or whole numbers. Or that is, um, variables that refer to a whole number value. Uh, so plus all of these, plus, minus, times, divide, and mod, we call them binary operators. They operate on something. They operate on two numbers. Binary operator meaning like two. It's an operator that operates on two things. So it, each of these basically uh, takes in two values and then returns a third value, if you think about it. You know, like, um, so we take, for example, five plus four. We've got two values there, five and four. And that produces, we can say, or returns a, uh, a third value, which is nine. 
So we call these binary operators because they're operating on two things. There are also unary operators that operate on a single value. So let's say we've got a number like let um, value equal 2. If we do value plus plus in JavaScript, let's do console.log value. That just increases the value of this variable by 1. And if you're new to programming, hopefully you're just begin you're beginning to get the idea of what variables do. I'll give you some practice with them uh, later on. But you can use variables essentially uh, instead of the values that they contain. They're kind of like a label for values in a way. So what this does is, so initially we declare the variable called value and set it equal to 2. And then we, we increment it. Uh, we increase the value of it by 1 using this plus plus operator. And then I'm going to output it, so we're going to see 3. So if I just run this, we get 3 there. There's, um, there, there are, there's another version of that that looks like this. So hang on, let's maybe put that there and then there's plus plus value as well. That does much, that does nearly nearly the same thing. There is a difference between this is this we call the um, postfix version and this the prefix version of it. There is a difference between them, which we'll doubtless see later on, um, but it doesn't really matter here for the moment. So we can see we've we've increased it again to four, and we've got the same thing uh, in we've got the same thing for like a minus minus version of it. So let's take a look at that. So we've got minus minus value. Or there's the postfix version as well. Like this. Looks like this. So that's um, that decreases the value of a, a variable that refers to a number by one. So we've gone from four to three to two. Okay, um, I think that's I think that's it for this video. What I'm going to show you next is we're going to implement a little program to convert temperatures between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, uh, so you, you can have a go at that if you want. If you can think you might be able to figure out how to do it. If you've done programming before, it should be easy for you. Uh, and if you haven't, then um, it might be difficult, but, you know, see if you can do it. Uh, I'm gonna, I need to check stuff into Git here. Usually I do it on the command line, but let's just see if I can actually do it using Visual Studio Code. So I don't usually do this, but we've got, if I go to this, there's this view here um, that, uh, that shows us kind of the source control view. It's like this icon in the in a top, sort of near the top left here, sort of sharing type icon. And if I hover over it, it says source control. Several files I've got here have a U by the side of them to show that they are untracked. I haven't done a git add and a name of the file or a git add star. So I can add them to version control. I think with this plus value, if I hover over that, it says stage changes. Let's do that. And then the U goes away. Well, that actually seems fine. And uh, so now I should be able to do a commit. If I hover over this changes, you know, that gives me a stage or changes. Oh, yeah, I see it. I couldn't quite remember how to do this. But once I've staged things for commit, I can then do a commit. And I can add a message here. Let's just put created in here. And then there's a there's a tick at the top here to actually do the commit. Let's try that. I think that worked. Looks like it worked. I could verify on the command line here. If I do git status. Yeah, the only thing I've got to do is um, a push to my local, to my uh, remote repository. I'm not actually sure how to do that. Yeah, let's try 
Let's try clicking these um, dots and going to push. Does that work? Something's happening, because I can see progress bar. Would you, would you like code to periodically run git fetch? No, because no one's going to change this repository apart from me. Well, it did something. Let's have a look now. Git status. Yeah, looks like it worked. Okay, so we can do all our Git stuff from within Visual Studio Code, clearly. But I do, in general, prefer the command line. It gives me more of a feeling that I know what's actually going on. Okay, we'll leave it there for this video. See if you can write a program that converts like Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius, if you like. And we'll come back to this in the next video.